Welcome to Booked, the bookstore education podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. This episode is part of our Bookseller Lightning Talk series, in which booksellers present short talks on tech tools, organizational strategies, communication methods, or innovations they've made in their stores. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our October Lightning Talk. Today, we're hearing from Allie Kirkpatrick from Old Town Books in Alexandria, Virginia, who will be discussing crafting non-bookstore partnerships. Um, hi, my name is Allie, and I am the owner of Old Town Books. We're in Alexandria, Virginia, which is just outside of Washington, D.C. So we're in a pretty urban area, but we're a fairly small store. Um, and we use partnerships a lot to build community and to reach new customers. Um, so on this first slide is a picture of me in front of my bookstore um, and some of the partners that we've worked with. So I'm going to first start out by going through sort of some case studies of how we've worked with non-bookstore partners and then kind of what I see as our best practices for working with them and then open it up for questions at the end. Um, so on this first slide, you'll see we've worked with um, food brands, restaurants, nonprofits, merch brands clothing brands even, which is kind of a weird one I'll talk about. Um, but if you change to the next slide, I'll do our first little case study of a brand partner that we love working with. Um, hotel AKA Alexandria is a new kind of ritzy hotel just down the street from the bookstore. So we recently hosted a silent reading party there and we had a social media giveaway for a two night stay at the hotel plus some food and beverage comps. And then we created a, a promotional package with them where it was like a reader's retreat. And so it's on their website as something that their customers can buy. Um, so that's what we did. And then with partnerships, I always like to think about like, what's the vision for the partnership? Why did we really do it? And in this case, it was to build relationships with a future venue partner. So Hotel AKA has conference rooms that seat over 250 people, but they're really expensive. So I wanted kind of an in where it was like a collaborative relationship before I made a cold ask for a large venue. And it actually, um, we just started working with them um, in the summer and it kind of came up just recently for um, Lisa Jewell, who we're doing an event for in January. We needed this size venue for her. So it was like, oh sweet, I can reach out to my folks at Hotel AKA Alexandria you know, playing a little bit of the long game um, and getting a comp for that um, event space, which is usually like $3,000 or something wild. Um, so we we did some legwork for this event. We did a silent reading party. So we had Hotel AKA paid for a live piano player. Um, they comped us the hotel room, but then we just like really promoted them to our customers in our printed marketing materials, newsletter, and social media. Um, on the left is just like a sample reel that we made with them for the giveaway. Um, we reached, um, you know, a few thousand people, 15,000 views on the on the reel. Um, so it was a really wonderful, unique way to get content, to get um, community involved and to really have a fun, easy to produce event. So it was off site. It wasn't like generating direct sales for us at the event. Like I think we sold $100 worth of books and merch. Um, but in all of these other ways, it was really beneficial for us. Um, you can go to the next slide. Um, this partnership was a little bit different. This is with a French restaurant also down the street from us. Um, we host fall reading challenges every year on the back of our event flyers. And for this one, we um, got a sponsor from the French restaurant for a mocktail, a sweater weather mocktail and a macaron, um, a pumpkin spice macaron. Um, and in exchange for that, we've promoted them to our audience. And the reason we did it was for the yummy prizes to nurture our community. Our community loves getting um, ice cream treats like we got from Jenny's or pizza treats like we got from our next partner. Um, so we also, though, audience shared. So they've included us in their social media, which we got, I think, like 18,000 views on this reel, which was great. Um, and then also really just nurturing our community again. So sort of depositing into the customers bank account some goodwill and some fun um and also this one is also an event venue space sort of like working that angle like hopefully you know if i if we decide to do like a lunch with an author event i can ask them like hey do you want to comp us 
some discount on food and bev or some space rental. Um, so that's been another really successful partner for us. On the next slide is um, Andy's Pizza. This is just a, another one of the same where we did a summer reading challenge and our um, customers could earn a free slice of pizza once they finished the challenge. And so um, the benefit for our partner um, was that we promoted their shop in our newsletter on social media and into um, printed promotional flyers. And a, a big thing for us in securing partnerships like this, where, you know, this pizza shop is giving out 150 slices of free cheese pizza, um, to convince them to do that, we have to have the data to really pitch them. So we had one of those little clicker things where we count how many guests we have visit our bookstore every month. And so we can go and say to them, like, we have like 4,500 footfalls every single month. And every single person that's coming in, we're, we're handing them a flyer and your logo's on the flyer. And, you know, so we convince them to comp us the pizza that way. Um, and it's also just to nurture a nurture campaign to um, build our, to thank our existing community and to reach new customers who are already Andy's pizza customers. Um, on the next slide is an example of a nonprofit partner and we are taking part in their community fundraiser, and we're also hosting a dog adoption event in front of the store. Um, and again, this is also a, um, you know, we've gotten tons of engagement, tons of goodwill. It's nurturing to our community. It's helping them to get involved. Um, but we're also reaching the thousands of newsletter and social media followers on Homeward Trails social media and, and newsletter channels. Um, and then also, it's just every brand partnership I've done, I've learned something. And so like my stolen idea from Homeward Trails was having this like kind of one pager sell sheet about partnering with us. So I haven't finished our example of it, but I just loved how they made this um, campaign one pager. And I'm like, oh, that's so that's brilliant. You can just like have it as a PDF attachment to share with someone explaining what you offer, having sort of like a member a menu of services for brand partnering. Um, on the next slide. Uh, is our partnership with M.M. Lafleur. Um, this is sort of more unconventional. Um, we put a mini bookshop in the back of a Georgetown clothing boutique, and we're also their vendor for author events, and we've done some social media collaborations. And this we did all about for brand awareness. Um, you know, they're a national brand. We were featured on their blog, featured on social media, um, but it's really helped us reach new customers in a place where our store, you know, it's Georgetown is like a 20 minute drive from us, but it's it's in the city. It's very urban. We get tons of people who are like, oh, I saw you in the back of M.M. Lafleur," And then they come um, to our shop in Alexandria. And um, it's just been, you know, a wonderful partnership. It's been, you know, we go and we restock the, the pop up once a month. They we they invoice us. We invoice them once a month. We restock the books. Um, and we've actually been selling books from it, which is kind of, I, I was surprising. I thought it would be like a break even thing, but it's actually, um, you know, a, a good partnership. Um, the stolen idea that I got from M.M. Lafleur is partnership agreements. So on the right side here is just a um, screenshot of what they sent me when we started working as brand partners. And so I immediately like copy and pasted this and like made my own version of it. <laughs> so um I now have partnership agreements that I use with everyone that I work with, and it's just made it so much easier to really have like clarity and um, mutual respect. Um, Cause I'm sure some people know that working with brand partners, they can treat you certain ways that, you know, thinking you're a small business owner or, or something um, that you're not, that they can kind of do what they want and having a brand, a partnership agreement has been really helpful for us. Um, the last thing, a couple of things I wanted to talk about were just, practices for finding good partners. Um, I found that um, securing brand partnerships is all about in-person networking and existing personal relationships and affinities. Um, also asking for connections from local econo economic development organizations um, and business groups. So I have a meeting this afternoon at four o'clock, for example, with um, Virginia Tech um, University, a, uni a university here in Virginia. And we're meeting to talk about maybe doing some sort of event series in the store or something like that. And I got that connection from our local um, econo economic development uh, person. Also newer businesses, almost everyone that I've collaborated with in the last year that, I, that I've mentioned in this presentation are 
businesses that are newer to town and are really open to brand partnerships and will invest money in giving away prizes and things like that. Um, so definitely, you know, reaching out to newer businesses. And then in terms of how I go about them, um, if I cold email, it's to ask for a coffee or a call. I don't pitch over cold email. I use in-person or phone calls and I have my data backed conversation about partnerships. Like we reach XYZ audience, mem many audience members, you know, really it's, so it's really clear that we have a value to them to offer. Um, and then a uh, menu of services. Um, oh, sorry, next slide. Um, having a menu of services, like you can sponsor a reading challenge, you can trade us an event or venue space for us producing an event for you, um, sort of things that we've done and tried. And so it's not like we're reinventing the wheel every time. And then obviously that, cr that clear agreement between the parties. And um, lastly, um, my favorite part is telling our partner how awesome we did and how beneficial the partnership was and just making sure that you celebrate and communicate the mutual wins at the end of the partnership. And then if you do those things, word really spreads that you're a great partner and um, folks will be lining up to give you free pizza and free ice cream and uh, free hotel rooms and things like that. <laughs> um, so that's what I have prepared. I'd love to hear if anyone has any questions in the chat or if there's anything else I could elaborate on. I went kind of fast. I actually have a question. Um, so was there any resistance to partnering, any resistance from you initially with partnering with folks that aren't necessarily book centric, but um, particularly the the dog adoption made me swoon. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need to get to Virginia and get a dog. Mm -hmm. um, was there any resistance initially to doing that? You're like, I don't see how this relates to books. Or were you just really focused on meeting new customers? I think um, part of the vision of our, like part of the vision of our partnerships is that for me as the store owner, um, I, you know, sort of got, my store is six years old. I, I sort of got burnt out on the book selling side of it. As we all know, it can be sort of stressful and kind of can feel like make, making widgets at a certain point where you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And for me, I had to find my passion and connection to the work again. So the dog adoption thing is one example where that's just a personal passion of mine. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily seek out those kind of events, but they've been they've been really fruitful. Like they've the they they're so happy to have our platform that they've just so generously shared their platform. And like every time they share a social media with posts with us, I get like 10 new followers. And so it's been it's been really great. And then my second question, because I'm I'm curious, is how after these partnerships are completed, well, I guess the MM LaFleur is more ongoing, do you immediately see an uptick in um traffic in your business or is it sort of like a slow, a slow build? Um, we see like people I, I post about our reading challenges and people like pull up in front of the store and get out and like, I'm just here to get my reading challenge and I'll be back. And, um, you know, anecdotally, I definitely do. I see like that enthusiasm. And I think in terms of like return on investment, like our, our big investment for partnerships is time and like my time and my attention. Um, and I think I'm in a place as a bookstore owner where I have a general manager, so I can put this time and attention on partnerships. But I would say for sure, some of them are more like directly beneficial than others. Like the MM Lafleur one is more of like, I get like two or three times a week, someone says they found us through M.M. LaFleur. Um, but through Andy's Pizza, I get so much feedback constantly that that's like a repeat customer that I'm getting because they love the Andy's Pizza thing. So um, it really varies. And and then other times um, it's just more of a creative um, return on investment. Like we've started hosting our, we're going to start hosting our own silent reading parties in store because it was so popular at our um, offsite partner, um, things like that. Thank you. Does anyone else have questions? You can either enter them in the chat or uh, raise your hand and we can call on you. Rachel asked if I, if we could share some of the partnership agreements and I would love to, I would be happy to. 
Um, and the name of my store is Old Town Books in Alexandria, Virginia. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Book to the Bookstore Education Podcast brought to you by the American Booksellers Association. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app. Additional educational resources can always be found on the ABA website at www.bookweb.org. Happy reading. Happy reading.